Paintball Nerd. Today's guest on Paintball Nerds Fun 5 started playing paintball in 1992. In 2003, he went pro with Trauma and began working at Paintball Central in the Carolinas. He's currently the CEO of Paintball Central. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Tyler Humphrey. Yay. Hey, Zizek. Hey, buddy. Thanks for coming on. Great yeah, to have no you. Problem. I love your show. Good. Man, uh, I have a I have a good Tyler memory. Uh -oh. And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, get ready. Get okay. ready. So because, um, you know, there's a lot of people from from the early era, the early 2000s that have Tyler memories. And I'm sure you you get to hear about them for the for the first time from those individuals. I do. Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> I got a six year old daughter, so be careful what you say next. Of course, of course, of course. So there was this like a uh, Benihana type restaurant that we would always go to uh, during World Cup, uh, Florida. Do you know, I don't know what it was called, but you know, they cook the food right yeah, in yeah. front of you. They make the onion volcano. They throw a shrimp at you, all yeah, that yeah. stuff, right? Uh-huh. Um, classy, classy establishment. Yeah. And um, they have a koi pond right, right inside. Right when you walk in, there's a koi pond. <laughs> okay. There's a koi pond right to your right when, when you walk in. So, um, you know, we would have dinners and it just, ha it just so happened that Baltimore Trauma and the Ironmen were having dinner together on that particular evening. Mm -hmm. um, and we were having a great time, you know, just doing what we do during paintball dinners. And at the end, as we were all exiting the restaurant, I think maybe that you felt like this is a good time to, you know, get some laps in, some <laughs> swimming laps. <laughs> well, they're right there. You can touch them, dude. Yeah. So you I went and you just like lay down in, in the koi pond and pretended like you were swimming. And this very timid, employee came up to you and was like that's not that's not a pool like trying to explain that you can't swim there uh -huh. so she ruined everything i know by yeah. making you stop um is this the first time you've heard this story um it is the first time i thought about this story in multiple decades yeah mm, but you remember it uh, yeah vaguely yeah <laughs> Well, hey, that's that's something special. We both remember it. Yeah. No, actually, I I barely no, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> I believe you though. Yeah. If if I had known that you wouldn't have remembered, I I maybe could have made up something else more more you know more crazy. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good though. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us tell us about a memory for you. I mean, you've had a lot of memories in paintball. You had a, an illustrious career. Tell us about a memory that really stands out for you. Um, like a good one? No, no. Just give us the, the awful ones. The no worst one ones? Here. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, the, <laughs> the, the best one. Well, I don't know. There were a couple. Um, so I don't know if you know the whole trauma story, but we started as an amateur B team and um, kind of worked our way up, up the ranks. Like we all kind of knew that we knew where we were headed kind of thing um and then but we couldn't like we could make semifinals we could make finals we were going to these national events um but we finally made like we we took first place after bumping to amateur a picking up some of the old image guys and we won uh world cup in 2001 and that was you know the first national level win so that was a big one um but then the one that most sticks in my mind is 2005. We beat the Russians um, yes. and won the NXL World Cup. And that was that was a good one because it was, uh, I don't know if you remember th those days, but we didn't have event winners. So yep. you would play an entire season of just like meaningless prelim games. Exactly. And then, and then it wouldn't, it, all it would do is place you for World Cup. So we would go through, you know, the whole 2003 uh, season, wins and losses, 2004, same way, wins and losses, 2005. Um, 
but what made it extra special is we started in 2003. That was when we, we became pro this, the exact same time that NXL started. Um, and we made a commitment to each other that we were going to stick together for three years and see how it went. Mm. And it was like, it was, uh, it was one of the things Rob Stottinger, you know, got us together and, uh, we all kind of stuck by that. We, some of us had opportunities to go play for other teams, bigger name teams or whatever, but we stuck together for that three years and it was kind of, uh, what, what would you say? Omniscient, pernicious, permission. I don't know. He saw it coming. So at the end of three years, we won it. And it was, yes, there you go. Um, so, you know, that was a three year long prelim season to us. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so winning that was huge. And, it was like a relief almost too, um, just the amount of effort that goes into the, you know, switching from 10 man to X ball was a huge change, but we went from amateur to pro at the exact same time. And, you know, all these pro guys, like that's who we looked up to. We were all cool with them because we weren't a threat because we played in the amateur division. Uh, yeah. And then all of a sudden we were, you know, and then <clears throat> just the, the, all that added pressure and, and all that added time, three years of, sticking it out finally paid off so that one i'll never forget that one man what was that like just like I mean, what was what was the score in that game versus the russians so we played best of three in all those matches so we start out with the iron man and we were real confident we were going to just walk over them and that one went to a game three uh it, they were like uh you know jp he was playing great like they had some Paxson was shooting people on the break. So hmm. that was a tough one. Um, and it kind of woke us up and then we had to play Bob long. Uh, and they were like top dog, you know, they were, I don't remember. It was either them or the Philly Americans that won the previous two years. Um, so they were always, always winning games. And that was a tough one. Um, and luckily some of our, inebriated fans kind of neutralized Bob long on the sidelines. So they didn't have, <laughs> they didn't have a lot of coaching that game. Uh, we ended up winning that one and then it was the Russians. And you know, that was, that was the peak Russian time. Like they were, everybody was scared to play them because they, you know, they, they had a, what seemed like an unlimited budget. They had people living in dorms and practicing all day, every day. And yep. uh, like technically they were, better gunfighters, better, you know, all the way around. And I think the only thing we had going for us is that we didn't care about that. We were, you know, super aggressive, lots of heart. We were obsessed with it. And like I said, we were on that three-year plan and it felt like nobody could stop us. And um, even though on paper, they should have mopped the floor with us. I think we ended up winning that last, uh, the last game, we beat them two games in a row, so it didn't even go to a third game. But that second game was back and forth. They were up, we were yeah. up, and then I think it was seven to six. Um, it was six to six, and then we won a, a big point to make it seven, seven to six. And there was only a few seconds left, so I got all excited and took my goggles off, took my pack off, threw, like started throwing stuff over the net to the fans. <laughs> Everybody's chanting USA, and then uh, one of the refs comes over and is like throwing a penalty on me because I'm on a live field with my goggles off and there's still time yeah. left. Uh, so we ended up having to play that last point four up. Uh, so I was <laughs> like, I thought, did I just ruin this for us? Um, yeah. But we, it, it wasn't enough time. So we ended up winning that. And that was just, like I said, it was, it was the, the happiest I think I've ever been besides my daughter being born. And yeah, one of those moments, it was like, um, you know, definitely something I'll never forget. Uh, but also just the amount of relief, like that's what I didn't expect was mm. uh, it was a relief to win it. So yeah, that was a big one. You know, it, it's trauma has an amazing story. It's, it's a special story and it's a rare story. And that story is a team that starts off playing together. They're not playing pro yet they're killing everyone in amateur they're doing very well and then somehow despite all the forces against this happening the entire team sticks together instead of getting picked about apart by other pro teams they stick together they go go pro together and they're successful together and 
that story is a rare one. But when you have that, most of the time, it results in success. And it seems the longer a team sticks around, the more successful they are. Like you, you look at, at Dynasty, uh, they did it. Um, yeah. X Factor did it. Uh, Trauma has done it. And I think the that's the list is over. I don't know anyone who went from who went from amateur and stuck together and then went pro with the same guys. Do you? No, I mean, um, I don't know if you remember that team one eight seven, but they were on that trajectory. I don't, I don't really know what happened to them. I I know they eventually did go pro, but maybe they got picked apart. I don't know. But yeah, yeah it, it is pretty rare. Um, you know, and it it helps that we were in a an area where. There, there wasn't another pro team to compete with us. And then, mm. uh, like I mentioned about uh, Rob and the three-year plan, part of that is is those guys came from Image, and they went through the same kind of being picked apart, you know, trading players back and forth and all that kind of stuff. And so they knew they knew what could happen, right? So um, yeah. like Rob and Opie were, were big on us sticking together. And then, like I said, we made a pact, you know. We weren't going to break that. We, 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 we were best friends too. It wasn't like we weren't flying a bunch of people in. We weren't, you know, we literally worked together, hung out together. Like we were together all the time and we were all kind of obsessed with, with going pro and then winning. So, you know, it, it was hard for sure. I mean, there were people getting offers to, to play on other teams. Um, yeah, we were we were pretty committed to it. So, you know, I I I got offered to play with Trauma. Did you? I did. That's news to me. Yeah, it was a it was at a Philly uh, Philadelphia event, and um, I maybe oh four, and and we had just played you guys. It was a it was like a grueling battle. Where it was down to like the last point, and uh, we ended up hanging, like getting to hang with one, literally one second left, and won that particular match. I don't know if it was finals or if it, if that match held any weight, but um, I just remember we were back staying at, at this hotel that had like this little lodge area, and I was sitting there with Rob and a bunch of other trauma guys, and yeah, and Rob was like, "Come move out to." The Carolinas and you'll have a job here and like pay, pay for trauma. And I was like, Whoa, that'd be so cool. You I know? do remember that. Yeah, yeah. I remember that match too. Um, that was, uh, where was that? That was in Pitts, uh, Philly pit. Yeah. Or could it, yeah. Pittsburgh, Philly. Yeah. And uh, I was the last guy left and I, uh, was the one who hung it with the second left. And actually you were like, were you the one who, hung it and i was like yeah and then you like kick the chair or something <laughs> in a loving way you weren't like pissed at me but no nah. yeah uh yeah i, I remember that because i think we that was like the first time we had ever beat um bob long and um philly and we beat them on the same day in that event so that that was a big event for us and it was like we were so amped up about those games because those were the two top teams and yeah. then we just came out and you guys beat us and it was a crushing yeah. defeat crushing <laughs> man yeah. it seems like uh crushing defeats like they don't uh they don't happen with the same flair i feel like as they used to it's like you know if you if you get like an x-ball it's you know it's 10 minutes there's a six minute mercy but if you if you see a team lose by six points it's not the it's not the most thrilling thing to watch you know it's yeah. just kind of wow these guys are getting their ass kicked and i guess they're gonna lose yeah yeah you'll you'll get me um amped up talking about this i we could go into it um but yeah i i think the x-ball format is deeply flawed i think like it could work at the pro level like it's kind of exciting to watch but um like i know you had oliver on your show and one of the things you guys talked about was how people used to have career defining moves, you know what I mean? And you just don't see that anymore. And it's just the repetition using the same layout and playing over and over and over and 
you know, you get down on bodies and you're down on points, you just throw in the flag and try again. And it's, it takes a lot of the, to me, it takes a lot of the fun and, uh, you know, like the moves that you used to be able to make were because everybody was seeing the field for the first time on the same day. And if you had a higher paintball IQ and you were, you knew what you were doing, you could, you know, you could pull off some crazy stuff. And now I feel like, you know, trading is like the biggest move you can do now. You run yeah. through and shoot one guy and you get shot. And then occasionally you'll get two and it's like a, a huge highlight. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Unless your team like, loses, then no one, no one cares. Right. Yeah. Um, so that could happen too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we could go deeper on that. I could go all day on that, but um, I, I mean, I think, talk about it a lot because yeah. like, you know, and, and uh, like a hundred percent of the guys from our generation agree that like, you know, paintball was more exciting when, you know, single games, not matches, like just one game meant everything. And therefore every move that you made within that game made everything. And therefore, if you were su successful, it was amplified. And if you yeah. failed, it was amplified and that made it more exciting for the viewers as well. Yeah. Um, uh, like Alex put it a good way. Like x is kind of like John Wick. You know, you're watching a John Wick movie yeah. and he's just like, pew, 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 and it's yeah. just like action, action the whole time. There's no like build up and crescendo. So it's just like, Okay, the action's yeah. over, I guess. Right. Yeah. Whereas, you, you can um, watch John Wick kill a hundred people and not remember a single exactly. one. Or yeah. you watch, you know, um, what's a good show where one guy dies? <laughs> uh, help me out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where uh, it's Man all on about fire. the story. There you go. I've never seen that movie, but sure. Oh, you gotta watch it. Uh, Gets revenge. It's great. Okay, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's a a build up and it more meaningful moves, more meaningful, you know, games. Um, yeah. I, I feel like we lost it and I, th I think it's coming back. I mean, you can see how much excitement there is around um, classic 10 man, things like that. Um, yeah. You know, I'm running a, a retro five man event kind of in that same vein. Uh, I also have a 10 man event that we run every December. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really want to get into running a series or anything, but I do think the more of those little standalone events that are all about fun yeah, uh, first and less about, you know, the repetitious uh, multi point format. I, I think, I think people will wake up to it. Well, I, I think you're right, Tyler, because like, if you, let's say let's just say let's let's pretend that we weren't in paintball for the past 20 something years and say we want to grow this thing bigger whatever this thing is right yeah in order to grow this thing bigger we need to expose it to a wider demographic we need to get more people interested in it right yeah well now, now let's just say the thing is paintball so if the thing is paintball what aspect of paintball is going to attract a wider demographic a sport where you're playing point after point after point after point or a game where you're capturing the flag and there's i mean there's finality at the end yeah which one I mean, attracts the wider audience yeah i mean it's i mean i can tell you from personal experience when i saw paintball on tv back in the day i would watch bad company versus uh, all americans in the woods on espn yeah. um like you can't tell what's going on, but it was still exciting. No you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and and I think it, it continued on down the line, like seeing some of the the moves Oliver used to make, you know, in key games against other top level pro teams, like that stuff sticks with you, and you remember it because it was more meaningful. It was more fun. Yeah. Um, whereas now, you know, they they come out with a layout, and it's you get hundreds of points on the same field they know every shot they know every lane you know and it's it's like a battle of attrition it's not you know the, the watching the scoreboard is more fun than watching the game sometimes yeah man i'm glad that you well I'm, I'm glad that i'm not alone in the way i feel on this you know i talk to current pros and i get a lot of pushback on this topic you know yeah Which I well get, i mean you know? yeah i mean they've put in the effort like a lot of these guys started playing this format 
since the True. day they started playing, you know what I mean? And yeah. they've gotten really good at it. And it takes, I mean, it's, it's a high skill sport still, you know what I mean? It's just true from a viewer perspective. And, you know, at our, our paintball fields, I, I talk about this sometimes. Um, we have like a little three man series and we'll see kids that get decent at paintball and then they want to try a tournament. So they play our three man series and they never play hyperball again. They never play mounds and woods. They, they only play our turf airball field from that point mm. forward. And they, you know what I mean? They go into five man, the next ball, and then either they make it to a D3 national team or they stop playing. And that's right. You know, whereas now, I mean, we, we could talk about the, the skill level too. I mean, you look at all the, the best pros, maybe not all of them, but the vast majority of them grew up playing a game. They had to use your brain a lot more than you do now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, You're in the woods and you had to outsmart your opponent. Yeah. And I mean, you can see it. You can see Alex and, and Ryan and Yosh, like they shouldn't be at the top of this game anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're as old as I am, uh, yeah. but they are because I, I think a big part, their brains, you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I think they developed that in the early years when they were, you know, little kids growing up playing big man, you know, 10 man events and, out in the woods and, and learning how to, to move and how to think. Whereas now it's, you know, you get a hundred reps on one field and you're pretty good at gunfighting and you're athletic. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be in the top 500 players just, just from that. So. Yeah. It's like, you know, ancient knowledge. Like we don't know how the pyramids were built, right? The <laughs> players today don't know how Oliver and Ryan can go out there and beat them when they're yeah. twice their age. You yeah. Know? Same thing. The, the old school players have the ancient knowledge that's been passed, mm -hmm. you know, passed down from generations. So you yeah. can't learn it, you know, well, you can learn it, but you have to find uh, the right field and the right, uh, the right environment. Yeah. To be sneaky. Sure. Sneakiness. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what it's it is. Just Tyler. Sneakiness. It's sneakiness. Like, that's all it is. It's yeah. Sneakiness because you don't have a lot of opportunities to be sneaky in x -ball. It's about gunfighting, moving. Um, but the players that know how to be sneaky, from other formats they're the ones that i mean they show you you know they there show you us go. yeah exactly yeah. well i mean you've played with some amazing players and uh let's talk about them who's who's your favorite teammate of all time favorite teammate who man you put me on the spot and um, by saying your favorite teammate you're saying that the other ones are not your favorite all right, yeah so, the, all the other ones suck and yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I've, I've got quite a few favorite teammates, but one that um, one that really stands out was Brian Stewart. Um, I don't Stewart. know if you remember him. I'll bet a lot yes, of people do. don't even know his name at all. Uh, but there was a time period like 2004, even 2005. I think he was the best paintball player in the world. Um, and, and that's including Oliver and everybody else. And it, I don't think many people know his name or any of that, but um, me and him grew up playing together early on before we even got into tournaments. And then, um, I mean, we were, we were doing like drills before drills were cool. We used to put, <laughs> what, you know, the big Doritos, we used to put that in the middle of the field and we would practice. Like I would be on one side, he'd be on the other side and we would start a game. And so huh. basically we're just bunkering each other over and over, but we got used to keeping your eyes open when you're bunkering somebody shooting them in, in the, the off switch, uh, like learning how to read shadows and the way people move, like all that kind of stuff that it sounded crazy and it, it probably was stupid, but like we would do things like that every day after practice. Um, yeah. so yeah. And, and there was a point, like I saw him, we went to, um, Bob Long's ranch and practice them one year. I think it was in 04. And it, I've never seen anybody play paintball like Brian Stewart did that day. I mean, he was like, Bob Long was getting so mad because he could do nothing to stop it. Like BC would just be, <laughs> would just walk down the field and keep his gun up on somebody and shoot them when they came out. And like Bob Long had, like codes for B Stu, which direction he would go so that they would try to shoot him on the break. Like it was crazy. Um, 
so yeah, he, he stands out. Um, but he was like, a, I mean, he was hot for those, those years. And then he got out and he's completely out. Um, what does he do? Where's he just gone? He's, I mean, he lives in Raleigh. He's not far from here, but he, uh, he is into building houses and making a bunch of money, but that's good. Man, yeah. He was, he was really amazing. Um, and then Ryan Hart is a big one for me too. He was our big back guy. And to this day, like we played ICC not long ago, there is a huge difference between playing in front of a guy that knows what he's doing in the back versus mm. somebody today. You know what I mean? Like, and you can look at Hart and just know that his gunfighting skills are not what a current pro's gunfighting skills are, but just the communication, just knowing mm. like if I'm in the snake, what he needs to shoot and what, you know, just automatically knowing that he's got my back, he's going to shoot down the tape. He's He knows when the tape's in and can tell me when to go. And it, like that kind of, that level of trust is something that, uh, a, you don't see a whole lot today, but B was even rare when we were, you know, playing against pro teams and stuff. There were, he would, I mean, that's kind of what we did when we were on trauma is we, like Hart would go and watch people like Poopy and, um, uh, gosh, what are all the big, like Rich Telford, he used to watch him a lot. Just, you know, the, the top back guys in the game, he would spend the whole, you know, prelim days watching those pros play it and getting better that way um i would do the same thing with snake guys and stuff and yeah so those two stand out for sure yeah it's you know you don't necessarily need to worry about gunfighting when you're you're out rolling your gun the whole time putting everyone in and letting your front guy do whatever they want and drawing yeah. all the guns you know so it's like yeah that's another thing that you know that's like that x-ball kind of uh you know, washed away as far as skill sets was the big guys in the back that had huge voices that could communicate to the whole team and kept their gun rolling the whole time. The like the eyes on the field. Um, yeah, X ball kind of turned that into a skill set that's irrelevant. You know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, now you're a Dorito or a snake player. You know, <laughs> one or two of, or three, uh, back or mid or front or whatever. Yeah. How about a uh, how about favorite player to watch? N not just when you played, but just of all time. Um. Oh boy. Uh, there's a few. Uh, you had BJ on not long ago. He was. I used to watch him. He he would do some. Him and Oliver would have some epic battles. Um, BJ was more fun to watch because he had that extremely loud bird voice. Do yes. you remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and like. So he would be communicating while doing Oliver type moves. So I used to love to watch him. Um, Little John from Bob Long's. I used to watch him. He was amazing. The sweatless wonder. Um, <laughs> the hairless wonder. <laughs> and sweatless wonder. Yeah. 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 Uh, he had both. <laughs> yeah. He was amazing, dude. Um, I think he was ahead of his time. Uh, let's yeah. see. Who else? I mean, that, of course, Oliver. Uh, a lot of the guys on Dynasty, you know, you would, everybody would try to watch their games. Mm -hmm. um, and then even like when we used to go to seven man, um, we weren't, we didn't practice seven man a lot. So uh, watching people like Carl Markowski back there, um, Brandon Mayo, those two guys were amazing in seven man. Of course, uh, Pony. Like oh, yeah. he, he got to play with us, but <clears throat> I used to watch him back in the day. Watch all the tapes, you know what I mean? Uh, Rocky, of course. Yeah, yeah. Those, yeah, those are probably my favorites. Those are good ones. Good. good oh, picks. Richie, Richie, Richie Malcheski. He was my hero. So the that, inventor, I mean, the founder of Image. Yeah, and and the uh, he was the first guy to do run through his like he i don't know he would do some stuff like he was the guy that invented running down the field and putting paint on six or seven guys and causing a commotion I mean, he was the king of that like lasoya was great at it too but richie just i don't know he had some kind of energy that i mean he still has it today watch I that watch that like man play a mounds field and you'll be blown away 
I think it was like he he was the first person to do it like with more intention. Like not just like I'm just gonna run through and see how many I can get. He's thinking more like when that guy in the corner flips his gun, I'm gonna run through and I'm gonna get five of them on purpose, yeah. and I know where I'm going. Like that's yeah, that's, uh, that's how it was with him, you know. Yeah, he was never the most athletic guy. He was just he was smarter than just about everybody else in the paintball field for sure. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. Do you have a, I don't know. I don't know if you noticed my trauma Jersey back here. I saw yeah. it. Yeah. That's yes. Robbie Pentanelli's. Yes. Robbie P. Yes. He drew a little heart on it. And he also got a heart on, on the sleeve there. Um, but that's my only, that's my only trauma Jersey. Um, so if you, I mean, if you feel obliged, you can just, yeah, send, I'll just send, send you one. Just, yeah. No just problem. Send me a few. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, <laughs> do you have a, do you have a, an item in your paintball memorabilia that's most cherished to you? Um, yeah. What, uh, yeah, I got one. Look, check this out. Hold on. <laughs> so this, this was a gun I used. What in, is that? In 2000. 2002, 2001, no, 2001. Um, we were amateur B. We went to SC Village and it was like the, you know, it was like my first big national tournament traveling across the country. And yeah. we had to play back then, you know, amateur B, amateur A, pro would all be in the same bracket. Um, and we beat the Tauntauns, which was our pro team. And I was using this gun. And then I don't remember what happened to it. Um, I don't know if I had sold, I, I have no idea, but, um, I ended up getting it back literally like three days ago. I got this back. Oh, you just got it back. Let's yeah. see the pneumatics. I want to see it. Close. I always like to see. So these probably aren't the ones I used 20 years ago, right. but, but yeah. Okay. So it's been updated. Know. Yeah. And but what kind of body is that? I've never seen that milling before. I think it was called a prism. I think, uh, I think WGP made them. For a short time, dude. But, the thing looks chrome and heavy. Yeah, it's super heavy. Um, I'll probably never actually shoot it again, but um, but yeah, that was cool. That I literally hadn't shot that in 20, 22 years, and I got it back just the other day. Like, How did found you the guy at it. Um, there's a couple guys. There's this guy named Quaz from around here. He's just like a auto cocker aficionado, and Everybody was like, ask him, he probably knows. And I asked him, and he's like, Oh, yeah, my dad has it. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we worked it out. Um, and then this is the other one. This is my favorite headband. It's it's not gonna last much longer, but um that's how you want him to look. Yeah. So I got this from Oliver in like 2000, 2001 at um in England. He was playing with uh a team called Diablo Image, which was like a throw together team, had like Todd Martinez and Rob Stoninger and Oliver Lang, Steve Rabikoff, uh, I say Lasoya. I don't know, it was a superstar team, but it, it was I one of those like, hmm, were you on it? I was on the roster, I never, never got to play, ah. so but it was one of those, um, like I knew I was going to be pro, I knew I was going to be good, but. I, it was like imposter syndrome being on that roster and being around those guys. Those were like my heroes and yeah. I was on, you know, so, but you know, him recognizing me and then letting me use this. And then this, like I wore this, I, I don't know. I mean, you could tell it's, it's there's not much left, but um, in 2005, I was wearing this when we beat uh, the Russians uh. and, and I was telling you, I, threw my goggles over the net so i didn't realize it but i threw this in my goggles threw it no. over the net didn't even know didn't care um and then like a month later somebody hits me up on facebook after i'd realized that i threw it and lost it um and he's like hey i you know i, I think this might mean something to you and so I, I ended up having to trade him but he sent it back to me so that was really cool so man yeah so, so what did you have to trade for it I think I gave him a signed, like the jersey I wore when we won. I think. Oh wow! I mean, he definitely got a good deal, but yeah. Th but this means more to me. This little yeah. yeah. You gotta frame it, dude. 
I know, but I, I still wear it. So. Oh, you still? Oh, you're still gonna get some some reps out of that thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can't play without it now. Yeah. That's a good one. I, I yeah. have one that's that's barely hanging on that I, that I've just retired. You know. Yeah. But yeah, it, but, it's uh until they, you know, Alex and Oliver sent me some. Uh, Hormesis one, um, they did the trauma line, so I've got some backups now, but that that's my baby. There we go, cool. Yeah, well, Tyler, what, what advice would you give to a, a player that wants to make their way to the top in paintball and also make their way, uh, by creating a career in paintball because you've done both? So, what advice would you give? Yeah, um, it's a tough one, man. Um, it takes it takes a lot of time and the the biggest thing really is you just have to be obsessed with it that's i mean all i can tell you is the way i did it and and the way i did it was i didn't care about anything else except for being good at paintball yeah. and and I, I told you a little bit about me and brian stewart but that i mean we were friends we did stuff off the field but that was we were obsessed with being better it wasn't it wasn't a hobby to us. It wasn't, I mean, we loved to do it. We liked it. We wanted to do it, but it was like, it was one of those things where we knew we were going to be good at this, this game and we weren't going to stop until we got there. Mm. And I think that's what it takes. Um, which, you know, it's a lot easier to say than to do, but it's, you know, it's the age old thing. If it, you have to love what you do or, you know, you, you can't be great at it without doing that. Um, yeah. So yeah, just that obsessive drive is what, you know, we had fun off the field, but that was like waking up early, showing up to the events early, setting up, like you remember the little fields with the tubes, like yeah. we would have to get up, it'd be ice <laughs> on the ground. And we're like putting those tubes with the little zippers on it and setting up these different fields and <laughs> And then we would play until it got dark and we would do the same thing on Sunday. And then, you know, it was every weekend driving yeah. from Raleigh to Greensboro, like whatever it took. Um, and, and that's, that's really what it takes. I mean, that's any sport. The good thing is you don't have to be a super athlete in paintball to get there. Like, I, yeah. you know, I wasn't exceptionally talented or skillful or like I was aggressive and it was all I wanted to do. So like, that's, that's really what it comes down to is, is deciding, is this worth putting everything else in my life on hold? Um, is this really what I want? And if it is, you'll get there. It's yeah. just, yeah. I mean, you'll find a way to make enough money. You'll find a way to make practice. You'll find it like, it'll happen if you're obsessed with it. So, and, and that's one of the, the big things not just about pain. Well, I mean, it, it is especially true in paintball because of nobody's going to make you show up and practice. Nobody's going to make you spend, like it's hard to, to get enough money to play every weekend. It's hard to do all those things. Um, so like if, if you can do it, if, if you're that passionate about it, then like I said, you, you will do it. It's not yeah. a, it's not a question. I mean, there's not that many people in this game. You know what I mean? That yeah, that travel and play paintball. So, just by doing those, do putting the work in, you'll get there eventually if if you don't give up on it. You said you have to be to be great at something. You have to love it, and you know that that makes so much sense to me. And I, dude, I even think Steve Jobs might have said that uh, because the reason that you have to love something to be successful at it is because anything that you want to be successful at in life, it requires you to go through challenges. Yeah. And the challenges are so significant and so great that any rational person thinking clearly is just going to say, this is too challenging. It's re requiring too much of my effort. So I'm going to quit. Yeah. But if you have a love for it, the, the hard work doesn't seem like work. It's just doing what you love. It's it's snap shooting isn't, a drill it's i get to shoot my paintball gun yeah. so i love that tyler i i think you're absolutely right there in order to be great at anything specifically paintball you have to love it because the love is what helps you persist through challenges or even 
transform your your perception of challenges into something different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and before I got into paintball and got out of everything else, I was into wrestling and baseball and I was pretty good at both. Um, but I remember the day I quit playing baseball, I was in the outfield doing drills like um, and I just I realized like I would much rather be at the paintball field right now than doing this. I, I don't yeah. love it. I don't I don't care if we win or lose. It wasn't you know what I mean? It wasn't it was just a hobby. It was a game to play. I yeah. like the athletic part of it, but it wasn't it wasn't something I loved or certainly wasn't obsessed with it. And so that like I literally quit and went straight to the paintball field that day. Huh. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny you mentioned wrestling because I, <laughs> I I talked with Shallow uh, a little while ago. Yeah, and Shallow was telling me this story about like how you're roughing up all the kids on trauma, and then wanted to wrestle Shallow, and he's like a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu master. Yeah, and uh, and then he like got you in some leg lock thing or some like ankle twisting. Something yeah, or like other. an ankle lock. Yeah, yeah, and he said that you refused to tap, so he just kept going, and then the next day you had this big black black ankle <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not fair because uh wrestling doesn't have things like that and no he was, yeah he was really good at jujitsu and i knew very little about jujitsu yeah but yeah and and you're prideful because you didn't tap no i wouldn't get a tap i was fine <laughs> i think i would have awesome. won he stopped he felt bad <laughs> yeah after it made okay. It made a crunching noise and he stopped. <laughs> yeah, he gave up right after he heard the crunch. Yeah. <laughs> but I heard you played the whole whole tournament with the with the messed up ankle. Yeah, I did Hour a lot of it. stupid things like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tyler, what are you what are you most thankful for that paintball's given you in life? Uh who I mean you're probably the same way, but paintball has given me just about everything. Like it's all the good things. You know what I mean? I mean, it was a, it was a struggle from day one, but it wouldn't trade it for anything. Like all my best friends are ex teammates. You know what I mean? Like every single one of them. Um, I have a brother and besides him, these, these are my brothers. You know what I mean? Um, so all my lifelong friends are from paintball my career is in paintball, um, you know, and the, the joy and stuff that we talked about winning and, um, but, but more than that, I think it's, um, like the, the struggle, right? Like, like Mm -hmm. learning, learning how to accomplish something when you put your mind to it, like it sounds real cliche, but, but that's what, you know, when, when I realized if I put everything I am into the, into this game and, I know that I'm going to be one of the top players in the game. I know we're going to win in the pro division. Like we set out to do that and we accomplished it. And, you know, the lessons you learn along the way, you can apply in literally anything in your life, whether it's your family, your work, any other endeavor you want to put that kind of effort into, you know that you can do it. And like, that's a, that's a, big thing i think a lot of people miss out on that you know they do certainly um so that is that's by far the biggest thing just um, yeah knowing that that you can accomplish stuff like that is is crazy yeah that's a that's a big one man that's it's never been quite worded like that for me but i definitely relate you know paintball paintball held helped me realize that i was a comp you know i was able uh to accomplish things that i put my my mind to and, um, you know, I, I, like you said, I, I don't think a lot of people get to experience that because they're doing things like they're just not passionate about. So I think we're very fortunate to have found paintball and, yeah. um, everyone dude, er, incredibly blessed, right. And everyone that plays paintball professionally and also happens to, to work in the industry, if you can do that you are incredibly blessed. Like you're living an amazing life if, if you love paintball, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's like, I could make more money probably doing something else, but 100% up, you can, I wake up every morning, like super happy that I, that I work in the industry that, you know, like I, I'm excited to go to work every day, which is, I think is pretty yeah. rare. Um, it is. 
Yeah. So yeah, you're you're right. It's a it's a blessing for sure. A little stupid game where we shoot balls at each other. I know. Who would have thought? I know, man. Awesome. Well, Tyler, thank you so much for your time here. Is there anything that you want to part with for the paintball community? Uh, yes. Hold on. It's my coffee here. Uh, Ninecoffee.us. Um, we could get into why this is the best coffee in the world, but I please do tell us. Tell us where to buy stuff. it. Tell, tell us where Nine, to buy it and why is it the best. Ninecoffee.us is the website. You can buy it there. Um, the reason I I didn't mean I didn't set out to start a coffee company. I just loved coffee and um if you go to any grocery store and buy coffee even if it's high-end twenty dollars bag type coffee if you look at the date you'll realize it's three months old or older um, gross yeah it is gross and so that was kind of how it started for me is i wanted to make it for myself and i started what i realized is you have to order pretty large quantities and I couldn't drink that much. So I decided uh, I'm going to get it for myself and then hopefully sell enough to feed my addiction. And so that's worked out pretty well. Boom. Yeah. I got Tyler's coffee. What's the website again? Nine coffee.us. Nine. Yeah. The number nine. The number nine coffee. Nine coffee dot US. US. There it is. Cool. Thanks. And Tyler. Paintballcentral.com. Mm -hmm. Paintballcentral.com. Yes. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Isaac. Love you.